right? So we were a niche within a niche within a niche within a slice, as you call it. Um, but this asset class is incredibly hard to do it yourself. So we tackled a lot of the pain, right? Most people don't want to just be a landlord, but in short-term rental, they have to be a landlord, a cleaner, they have to manage pricing, they have to deal with guests, they have to deal with children pissing on walls. It happens, you'd be surprised. So we took all that, packaged it up in a way and said, would you be interested in investing something like this if, if it was done for you? And the short answer to a lot of people was yes. And the short answer really was yes to us because we were that out of ourselves. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My guest today on Raising Private Money has raised $37 million for real estate deals. Well, how in the world did he get to that point? Well, he actually is an ex-techie turned real estate investor. In the meantime, he's helped thousands diversify into real estate. And this was after spending almost five years at Facebook, where he built the second largest engineering organization in the world. Well, past a little bit of time, he's only hired over a thousand people, a thousand hires later, and then he had the epiphany. You know, a company's most important asset is its people. Well, he is the founder of a company called TechVestor. And what TechVestor does is it helps real estate investors and busy professionals invest passively in this emerging asset class that I know you've heard of called short-term rentals such as Airbnbs and the like, and build for their lifestyle. So all investors get to use the properties that they invest in that are associated with TechVestor, and they get some pretty nice returns as well, and I know you want to hear about that. Well, TechVestor's advisors include people and folks and companies such as AirDNA, Realtor.com, and Bigger Pockets. But this isn't your average real estate investment company. You see, TechVestor built its own proprietary sourcing technology where it can actually underwrite, listen at this, over 50,000 properties a month and acquire the best ones for its investors, just like you. So if you're looking to raise private money for your real estate deals, we're going to have that conversation in just a moment. And if you're interested in also passively investing, well, you're going to learn about that as well. You're going to meet my fascinating guest, C. Kafagi, right after this. Well, Keith, I'm so excited to have you on Raising Private Money. And I must say, for someone such as yourself, at the ripe old age of 18 years old, you must have really a different kind of mindset than most people have when it comes to attracting private money. So my first question for you, Keith, is what kind of mindset does an individual have to have in order to attract, you know, something like $37 million in private money? Jay, well, first and foremost, thanks for having me on the show. And, uh, you know, the, the mindset of, uh, not so 18 year old anymore these days. Um, you know, we wanted to be different really in every way. We wanted to build advantages in this space. Uh, that's why we built our own technology and we've automated a lot of the experience where we can. Um, and we also really predominantly focus on the investor experience. I think that's a big area where people kind of forget. And that's really where we, that's the mindset we were in. Is if we were an investor, what did we want to see? How did we want to see it? What kind of information did we want to learn? Um, and what kind of experience at, at the end of the day, you know, whether it's now or five or 10 years from now, do we want to have? That's the mindset we put ourselves in. And that's the mindset we put ourselves in to go get that 37 million. Very good. Well, see, here on Raising Private Money podcast, we talk with uh, new real estate investors and seasoned real estate investors that are looking to raise private money or raise more private money. And we also talk with our audience about becoming passively involved as an investor as well. Let's start out our conversation first with giving an advice from your experience. Say to 
a new real estate investor that wants to attract some private money, um, what advice would you give them from your own experience on how do you start? Where do you go out? You know, how do you start conversations on attracting private money? And of course, we're not talking about institutional money. We're talking about doing business with individuals that are looking for a high rate of return, uh, you know, safely and securely, but to be passive. Where do you go find these people and start the conversation? I think the first thing really is in your offering, right? You want to be able to, uh, you know, a saying that I heard from a mentor a long time ago is don't reinvent the wheel, but drive differently. And for us, we are one of the only institutional grade short-term rental operators in the country. That also happens to be vertically integrated. So by nature, we looked and felt differently because we were in an asset class that not a lot of people know um, or understand very well just yet. And secondly, our team was driven with technology and data and software. Like if you go to our website compared to any other syndicators type website, they look and feel completely different. In fact, many people compare our website to that of a tech product rather than that of a syndication company. Um, and then, you know, tie that into your why, right? Everyone and their mother wants to go raise money for a real estate deal. And they all want to buy a multifamily building or an office building or a single family home and flip it. And that looks and feels the same, right? We, we get disinterested as repetition continues. And you have to find a reason to separate yourself. So that could be your asset class. That could be your why. It could be your structure. Um, it could be your team. Uh, it could be the way you look on, you know, on your website and how you feel and who you attract and the avatar community that you tackle. But uh, riches are in the niches. And I know you know that quite well, Jay. Well, that's for sure. Well, one of the, you know, obviously today, one of the ways that uh, TechVestor attracts private capital is being a guest on a podcast, just like sure. you're on my podcast. Um, but when you started out, what are some of your, uh, you know, other than being on shows and being on guests, what are some other ways that are your favorite ways to attract private capital? The first one's going to sound a little obvious, and it's to solve a problem, solve the biggest pain point. When we first started, we were actually a software product, and uh, we attracted some people, but we didn't attract enough people to, to really be in business. And we, it's because we weren't solving the right problem. So over the next about 60 to 90 days, we continued to pivot our offering and pivot our pain points that we were tackling until really we got to a point where we understood our avatar and the type of investor, and we raised about $7 million in the next 30 days. So that to us was our first ah, aha. That's the moment. These are the one, two, three things that we want to hit. So solve, understanding what to solve for, what pain point you're solving for, for your type of avatar, I think is the biggest point. Where you find them comes a little bit from the pain point you're solving. Busy professionals, you're, it's going to be really hard to get them into an in-person meeting on a Friday afternoon when they got kids and family at home. So you got to be able to adapt, right? Um, is it a team? Is it ads? Is it podcast shows? Is it one to many? Is it one to one? Um, is it social, right? Everyone has their channels. Um, I encourage people to not focus on every channel, but rather focus on the channels that matter most to their avatar. Excellent advice. Excellent advice, See, Well, before we get into the subject of your, your big focus right now today, that being TechVestor, I want to give everybody a gift for just being right here on the show with us. And I've just recently written this seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. If you're looking to raise private money very, very quickly for your real estate deals, you can download it for free at jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. That's jayconner.com, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Let's move on over to TechVestor. Um, how did you come up with the idea? I mean, this is like a niche of a niche of a slice of a slice of a pie. Well, that pie is very tasty. And uh, Sabrina and I, you know, we're the two co-founders. We were in tech at the time. And we stayed in a bunch of really, really poorly ran and operated Airbnbs, right? I spent time hiring and recruiting a lot of people. And when you hire people, you're not just hiring them to a company. They're oftentimes relocating to the city of Boston, for example. 
and they are working at your company, but also they're moving to a new city. So where they sleep, where their kids are going to go to school, you're opening up a new city. And when we were there, we stayed in a bunch of Airbnbs. Uh, Sabrina was developing AirPods and built the first uh, AirPods uh, product line and took that to market. So from an operations and logistics uh, and design perspective, she was really fantastic. And for me, it was really about recruiting a lot of great talent and technology. Um, and these people that we were recruiting, they really just did not have great experiences in the short-term and mid-term rentals that we put them up at, and neither did we. So we asked ourselves, why has no one really scaled this asset class? And we were LPs in other syndications, um, and we just no one has really tackled the world of Airbnb. So we said, well, what if we could? What if we could make it as easy as investing in an apartment building these days, right? And you know, you and I understand a little bit about syndication, but the, the broad world actually doesn't, right? So we were a niche within a niche within a niche within a slice, as you call it. Um, but this asset class is incredibly hard to do it yourself. So we tackled a lot of the pain, right? Most people don't want to just be a landlord, but in short-term rental, they have to be a landlord, a cleaner. They have to manage pricing, they have to deal with guests, they have to deal with children pissing on walls. It happens, you'd be surprised. So we took all that, packaged it up in a way and said, would you be interested in investing in something like this if, if it was done for you? And the short answer to a lot of people was yes. And the short answer really was yes to us because we were that out for ourselves. So uh, explain exactly what TechVestor is. So first of all, does TechVestor, is that the investing arm of your company or does TechVestor actually own the properties? Uh, what, to give us more detail about TechVestor itself. Yeah, so TechVestor is our technology platform um, and our main company or main holding company, for lack of a better word. Um, each year we start a new uh, fund where we invite limited partners to invest alongside us, the general partners, into a portfolio of short-term rentals that are found, operated, and ran by our team. So we are the GPs, investors are the LPs. We're a very traditional GP LP structure for those who are familiar with the uh, real estate world. But our technology and our IP is housed within the tech, tech investor infrastructure, which allows us to really infinitely scale. That's a huge advantage of our uh, of our offering and our business. We're not in just one market and we, we don't just own one or two properties in a single market. Uh, today, we own a little over 100 properties across 12 different markets. So how do we find them, identify them, operate them? A lot of that starts with a lot of great technology um, and, of course, a ton of incredible people behind the scenes. Well, you just answered my next question, and that is how many short-term rentals do you have? And if you've got over 100, I mean, of course, your background is, is uh, technology. So there's just no way that a company can manage over 100 properties, particularly in this short-term rental space, unless you have got an amazing team uh, amazing management, amazing um, people finding skills, <laughs> uh, and, and the such. So, um, yeah, my kudos are to you. I, you know, I have been in this industry, real estate investing, for 20 years, and of course, you know, Airbnb and short-term rentals really started emerging. I don't know, four or five years ago is when it really started to get, you know, all the buzz talk. And you're the first company I've heard of that's really figured out how to scale it, uh, which leads me to my next question. How do you underwrite over 50,000 properties a month? And of course, just to make sure everybody understands my question, when I say underwriting, I'm assuming what that word means, uh, Steve, is figure out if it's a good deal or not. <laughs> Precisely. And you would be very accurate on that. And that's exactly why we built it. So uh, fun fact, and I'll give you some real-time uh, updates here as we're recording this in April. Uh, today, we actually underwrite over 100,000 properties a month with our most recent push on our update. We're tracking over 257 local markets um, to where we have an interest in investing. And in short, exactly as you mentioned, a property hits the open market. We know about it uh, within seconds, um, and we're able to underwrite it by pulling in data from a lot of, both, a lot of places, both public and private. Uh, data um, and complementary data, right? As well as data that disagrees with each other so we can get the whole scope of things. And it goes through an underwriting algorithm that tells us, hey, does this deal work or does it not deal at face value? Do the numbers work? Um, and the reason this matters to us is because 
for us to go buy and identify a hundred or 200 or a thousand properties, we're looking at, you know, roughly 50 to a hundred times those properties. And before we identify the homes we're going to buy, I mean, in short, out of a hundred thousand properties we underwrite, maybe just maybe 1500 to 2000 of them actually fit our buy box of what we might be looking for. And that's before you get to the artful side of real estate. What does it look like? What do the bones look like? Where is it? There are things that technology and data can't tell you exactly. And that's the human side of real estate. But we're able to, you know, accomplish about 96 to 98 percent of the job on the number side uh, before we waste anyone's time. And that's a, a big reason that we don't charge, you know, exorbitant fees on, you know, typical asset management fees and things like that, because we're an incredibly lean and tech driven organization. That's amazing. So why would someone be interested in, say, passively investing? with uh, your company and these short-term rentals versus, you know, all the other commercial stuff, self-storage, uh, apartments, small apartments. Of course, we know why nobody's investing in office buildings these days. But, <laughs> and we're, you know, com comparing and, and contrasting other uh, commercial properties or, or single family. I mean, you know, Airbnbs, a lot of those are single family that, you know, you've converted into this commercial asset class. Why short-term rentals over other stuff? Well, you know, I think the first and foremost thing is a good diversified portfolio is probably the best option for most people. Um, I'm a believer in every other asset class. I'm an investor in those asset classes, but I'm an investor passively because I do not understand them to the extent of that as much as the people I invest with. Um, but we're incredibly bullish on short-term rentals for a couple of reasons. Uh, first and foremost is cash flow. Right, we believe in investing in, in for income and in income, and Airbnbs are one of the highest, if not the highest, yielding asset classes when operated well. Secondly, the lack of competition in the in the industry is massive. Right, in commercial and multifamily, I mean, if you you're, I mean, you're competing against BlackRock, Blackstone, people who have their shit together every single day. You know, you don't have your shit together one day, you're going to be out, you know, in a heartbeat. Um, in short term rentals, ninety five to ninety nine percent of the time, you're competing against, you know. Mama Joe and Grandpa Bob down the street who have some IKEA furniture in a room and calling it an Airbnb and really happy with making a couple hundred bucks in cash flow a month. The arbitrage opportunity is is in incredible, right? Because they're not really looking at it like a business. Um, and lastly, you brought up the a really important point, which is we are buying single family homes based on the value and operating them and selling them eventually based on revenue. Right, which is an arbitrage and a development in itself without actually development. In fact, we see development like returns without taking development like risk, right? In addition to significantly uh, better cash flows during the whole period, right? If you compare it to a class B value add multifamily, which might be a great deal, you're rarely ever going to hit that press in that deal because it's not a cash flow focused investment. You're going to get about 75 to 85% of your return on exit. We are much more even. You're going to get about half your return during the whole period. And about half of your return on exit. So from a risk adjusted perspective, and for the uh, reasons I mentioned earlier, we believe it's a great compliment to most people. Well, and that does set you apart. I mean, a lot of <clears throat> private investors, private lenders that in get involved in a project, a lot of times, even on a you know a preferred return, they're not seeing anything like right. till three years down the road. But with your Airbnb model uh, or short term rental, um, you got you got cash flow and income coming like pretty much at the beginning. Oh yeah, our first distribution usually happens within. You know, we tell investors in roughly about six months, right? And you know, when you look at our trailing, you know, I think it's about about two hundred and forty two months of history at this point across all our portfolios. Um, they're roughly, you know, we're we're, we're above an eight to a twelve percent cash on cash on a trending basis, uh, typically almost all the time. <clears throat> That's fantastic, eight percent to twelve percent. And my next question is going to be around building a team and also wrapping up with the topic of AI, which is all the buzz these days. Uh, it's amazing what has happened in the past five months. Uh, absolutely mind blowing. And I haven't had a guest on the podcast, Raising Private Money, that would be more qualified to talk about AI than you yourself. But before we get to that topic, please go ahead and share with everyone how they can learn about how to invest in and become a passive investor in your company and learn more about it. 
Yeah. So if you're an accredited investor and you're looking to diversify into short-term rentals or it's something that piques your interest, you're more than welcome to head over to techvestor.com, request an invite, chat with someone on our investor relations team, review the materials, make sure it's a good fit for you. Mm -hmm. And if all everything checks out, we'd love to have you as, a, as an LP here in our second fund where we're targeting in that 50 to $100 million range and repeating the success of our first fund. That's awesome. So that website is www.techvestor, T-E-C-H-V-E-S-T-O-R.com. And of course, that will be in the show notes as well. So AI is all, all the hot topic, artificial intelligence, uh, chat GPT, open AI, all that stuff. And now, I mean, my guess is um, you've probably written your own AI. Um, I'm in a mastermind group that um, I was with last week. And, and this guy and his team, they got their own AI going on. So anyway, are you using AI in your company? You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as to say we're using a, a chat GPT like AI, um, but we do have our own machine learning models and learning models in general uh, that act behind the scenes that allow us to forecast price better, um, understand what our future expenses may look like based on seasonality, based on trends, um, and predict based on the market if we don't actually have that data. So we actually do run some complex learning models in the background. Therefore, we can better operate, right? And we find that our costs to run and operate a property, uh, property management fees included, typically run about 50 to 80% cheaper than if you were to go hire your traditional property manager in the space. And a lot of it happens to be because we use a lot of technology and tooling behind the scenes with a lot of learning models that allow us and guide us where we go. But we are heavily, heavily focused on uh, building a human-driven environment with the help of technology rather than the opposite of having technology replace humans. <clears throat> and and I appreciate that because there's a lot of talk out there about what is the future? I mean, we know what Elon Musk and the rest of them are saying these days, put 4.0 on pause, put 4.0 on pause. Anyway, um, so I wanna wrap up with this discussion uh, and this topic, and that is on building a team. Um, how big is your team uh, at TechVestor? And, What's your advice on growing a team and finding talent? So our global team is about 30 people uh, all across the country um, and across the world. Um, and our leadership team is roughly about eight to 10 people. The biggest advice I can tell you is uh, don't be cheap and hire the best, right? It's, it's a big thing that I saw at Facebook firsthand. And really, I think anyone who's really experienced a ton of success in their life will tell you. It's not because of the product necessarily or the company. It's because of the people who are building the product and leading the company. And so for us, we've made an incredible investment in our humans, hiring the best people. They were selected, recruited, headhunted um, specifically for their role. And it's something that's a big, big deal to us to have the best possible people on our, in, uh, on our team, dealing with our infrastructure, growing our infrastructure, and navigating problems. Um, I, I can't stress this enough, especially in the syndication space, having an incredible team to navigate problems because problems and changes, your, whatever your investment thesis is on day one, is not where you will end up. I can assure you that things will change, things will come up, and you need people who can navigate those in real time and make decisions on your behalf as an LP. That is the job of a general partner. Well, believe it or not, Steve, you just got a shout out from Elon Musk on YouTube. Uh, he's right there in the chat. And Elon says, thank you, bro. I think, he's saying, I think he's saying thank you, bro, for the hiring of humans. I, I would imagine. I would imagine. <laughs> awesome. That's great. See, that is, I mean, this has just been amazing to have you on here. Um, I respect you so much for what you're doing and particularly your values, your core values and your ethics as to how you're out to not just to make a buck, but to how it be a win-win for everybody on your team. Final comments before we wrap up raising private money. You know, first and foremost, thanks so much for having me, Jay, and thanks for those, those uh, really courteous comments there as well. Um, you know, anyone who's out there thinking about raising private money, if it's out there, go get it. Differentiate yourself, listen to this podcast. Um, and there's a ton of episodes here that Jay, you know, spits a lot of value. Um, go do you'll find that 99% of people just simply don't do and how far you can get by just doing. So get out there, give it a shot and uh, come compete. We want some competition. Bring it on.
<laughs> you got it. There you have it, my friend. Thank you, my audience and followers, for tuning in to another episode of Raising Private Money. What a great time to have Elon Musk right here on the show with us today. And I'm here to serve you, my friend. It's all about raising private money, creating win-win scenarios. And I'll leave you with this. I need your help. I really would appreciate a uh, subscribe, uh, a like. If you're watching on YouTube right now, be sure and click that bell so you don't miss any more of the upcoming amazing episodes of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, your host, also known as the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business and your personal life to the next level. And we'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money with Jay Connor. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Conner.